All right, I spoke to the owner and uh, he watched the video and we're getting started. I've removed the top boost card for now and I've disconnected uh, the uh, volume pot on the treble channel, the brilliant channel. And I'm gonna remove that from the amp right now. By checking date codes on all these. So I'm laying them down on the bench in the order that they're coming out. The uh, ground wire has been removed from the bus wire here. This pot on the base, uh, sorry, this pot on the normal channel is quite defective. So I'm gonna remove that. And the way to do that with this bus wire is uh, all the pot lug one, all, lug one of all the pots goes through this bus wire. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But we also want to change out the three position switch down here for the speed control. We're going to put in a continuously variable pot per the owner's request. So I'm just going to take all this out while I'm in the area. So slide this down. There's the defective normal channel. And the vibe trim pot seems to be fine, but it's also needing to be removed so that I can change out the pots on the trim. And as this amp has had some work done to it, instead of just having a uh, switch here and a separate trim pot, I'm gonna replace this with a 500K push-pull pot. So you can vary the trim depth from outside the amp and still uh, switch between vibe trim. I've done that before. It could always be put back. These original parts will be returned with the amp and all, but uh, it makes it for a much nicer experience. That top boost add-on card is not original to the amp. That's a later edition. So this amp, I don't think ever had top boost from the factory. And I'm not convinced that it's a 64. It might be a 62 or a 63. I'll be checking the date codes on these pots and switches as I pull them out. This is just playing the bus wire game. And I'll go back and clean all the bus wire connections up after this. And I already disconnected the wire and the three resistors to this pot, so it should just, this switch rather, so it'll come out. I mean, bend that cathode bypass cap down. So these original components, the, the two switches and the vibe trim are going to be replaced with pots. These will be returned with the amp. Uh, all panties can stay unwatted. And I'll remove these three resistors and clean up all the old solder from this bus wire and make it all shiny, happy, new again. But uh, this is the beginning of a pretty thorough rebuild to make sure that it never has any issues going forward. And a lot of the stuff in this area that's kind of hidden by the pots. Now is the time to get all that just right. So I'll be going through and checking every resistor and every cap throughout here, making sure they're all good and that all is just hunky-dory and generating a parts list for the order because this amp, uh, while it made sound, only made sound some of the time if you see part one. And that's not good enough. I've got everything out and cleaned up. The bus wire has been cleaned. The Panel's been cleaned. The other side of the panel's been cleaned. And uh, aside from that one bad pot, they all seem fine. The pots date to July of 1962. It's got a G and a J on all of them. Uh, trying to date this amp, I don't think it's a 64. I think it's a 63, and I think it's sometime in the spring of 63. And it's hard for me to be more precise because I don't have the speakers and I don't have the cabinet and I can't look at the vents or anything. But the uh, two 6-watt resistors in the output section, the 82-ohm uh, for the cathode bypass and the 22K that goes to the uh, uh, screen node, those seem to be original to the amp. They don't have the Wellwind date code on them, but that 82-ohm uh, changed to 50 ohms in uh, June of 1963, and it is very much the 82 ohms. So that puts this at May of 63 at the uh, earliest, given the 1962 and, you know, midway through 1962 pots. I think 62, 63 is much more likely to be the date range of this amp. Uh, also in 63, they started to use more Phillips mustards, and as you can tell, this has got the uh, Wema gold foils. 
All the electrolytics have been changed out, and the output in, in power transformers long ago lost the little paper labels, so there's no date code remaining on those. So unless the owner has something more specific as far as a speaker date code goes or the size of the vents, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's pretty safe to say that this is a 1962 or 1963. Either way, it's going to be a fantastic amp, and I you know 62, 63, 64. That's all kind of bragging rights kind of stuff. That's not my business. My business is to make it sound good and to last. So I'm on it. Now for the very important, very glamorous stuff that first got me into amp repair. Cleaning everything. Big, big old squirts of isopropyl in the tube sockets and on the board and kind of down in everything. Work it in there. Get all kinds of grunge out. And then I'll tilt everything and get most of it to go into paper towels. And it'll be great. It'll be so great. But getting all this funk out will allow me to do much better work when it's time to go in here and start soldering. And if there's any areas where I need to really get in there, I've got a toothbrush. There's one of those solder joints I don't trust among others. But believe it or not, this is actually pretty clean as far as JMIs go. Usually they're uh, showing the signs of having been an airborne ashtray for decades and decades. Anyway, more of this to come. I won't make you watch all of it. Uh, it's uh, very unsexy, but my God, does it result in a good sounding app when I'm done. There will also be a lot of exciting things like this happening, where I disconnect a chassis ground connection. In this case, it's for the output uh, transformer ground. And we clean up all the connections because see all that dirt that's in there? That was between the various metals. And all the metals are tarnished. And by cleaning all this and then putting it all back together with good metal to metal contact and no dirt and yuck, We'll actually have really good grounds and the noise floor will drop. You know, there's a lot of ticky tacky little stuff and I never know what to include in the videos because, you know, people never watch the whole video or the majority of people don't watch the entire video. So sometimes I figure I'll do like, I'd rather do five, seven minute videos than one 40 minute video because more people might actually get the information I want them to have. It's, it's really not about, oh, People need to listen to me talk or about me and at all. It's I'm trying to get information out there. And, and I know a lot of people will accuse me of being long winded, but some of my ideas or some of the concepts I'm trying to present in these things can't really be summed up, at least not by me. And uh, I get tired of everything being 30 second sound bites in the society. I like sometimes just to explain things in depth. For instance, dissimilar metals. Chassis, you know, dissimilar metals react to each other and form a form of corrosion. The chassis flexes, all the stuff gets a little bit loose. Dirt and stuff finds a way into all the little microscopic crevices, and then we have bad grounds. But in this case, like so many other things when it comes to music, alcohol is the solution. And I'll be going through the amp and finding all the little things like this, where this resistor uh, was replaced but was never soldered. And that is one of the reasons that Vibe Trim. Yesterday sounded so wonky, so I'll be revisiting this area in a little while, but until then, let's just uh, help things out. Fiddling with it, I discover that solder will not stick to that because it's so tarnished and that the, its neighbor's solder joint is also not very great. So I want to get in here and clean, kind of burnish that area on that resistor and give that resistor a little bit of a bend. I've been careful not to mangle the uh, tag at the same time. Now I'll try reflowing that. Okay, one non-existent solder joint fixed, one solder joint where the uh, lead of this cap had actually broken the joint, 
fixed. Just a few jillion left to go through. What was I saying about alcohol being the solution? <laughs>